Tonight on the MTN News, a glimpse into the devastation. The most Jews ever murdered in one day since the Holocaust. Let that number sink in. As war breaks out in Israel, leaving thousands of people dead, we get a first-hand look into the terror felt by so many. Plus, legacy of a trailblazer. One thing I liked about Malia Kip, once you watch the documentary film, she talks about how basketball's in her genes. A new documentary features a former Grizz grade who became a Big Sky legend for the Native American community. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. Well, the death toll continues to rise following Hamas's surprise attack on Israel. More than 1,500 people are now reported dead, at least 900 Israelis and around 700 Palestinians as Israel launches retaliatory airstrikes on Gaza. At least 11 Americans have also died in that fighting. Israel's defense minister ordered a complete assault on the Gaza Strip following the weekend attacks, saying the military has retaken control from Hamas Israeli airstrikes hit more than 800 targets in Gaza, killing more than 140 children, according to the Gaza Ministry of Health. Israeli officials say Hamas fighters captured more than 100 hostages, including women, children, and elderly people. President Joe Biden is pledging support for the Israel Defense Forces. And that war, even being more than 6,000 miles away from Montana, is hitting too close to home for some. That includes two Jewish rabbis with family members still in Israel. Tonight, they give our Haley Monaco a glimpse into the devastation and the pain that they're feeling. I'm not a man that's known to be at a loss of words, but the last 36 hours have been, I've never experienced anything like that in my life. Even though violence that erupted Saturday in Israel is more than 6,000 miles away, it's still hard for Montana Rabbi Chaim Brook to watch. We're talking now about over 1,200 Jews slaughtered, brutally raped, children being taken as hostages, beheading of, of Israelis. Now as Brook and Billings Rabbi Shaushkedi watch the horrifying events unfold between the Hamas militant group and Israel, both have to worry about their multiple family members in the country. My mother's entire side of the family all lives in Israel. I have cousins who currently right now are fighting in Gaza. My father and his wife live in Jerusalem. My uncle and aunt live in Zdarot. My uncle one hour ago was looking out his window and watched Israeli soldiers in the building across the street, they found two terrorists that have been hiding there since Saturday. As the death toll continues to rise in both Israel and the Gaza Strip, Rabbi Brook shares that this war is causing him to feel many emotions, especially anger. If you want to help Israel and you want to say, I support Israel, and then there's a but, I don't want to hear from you. It's not a time for the but, Israel this or Israel that this. Because if Hamas had their way, they kill every Jew in Israel, which would be more than the six million killed in the Holocaust. According to the rabbis, Montana has a constantly growing Jewish population, which they say needs support. We need the love, all the love we can get right now, because in our eyes, if we don't hear from you, it means that you don't care enough or you actually agree with the people that are slaughtering Jews. Reach out to them because most likely they're looking for more comfort and a, and a comforting phone call can be make a big difference. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. Some background on Hamas, the Palestinian militant group that launched the attack on Israel this weekend and started this latest conflict. Hamas has ruled the Gaza Strip since 2007 and has vowed to destroy Israel. Since then, Israel has launched four large military campaigns against Gaza and Hamas has developed its own rockets to hit Israeli cities with. Both sides are accused of deliberately targeting civilians. Several countries, including Israel and the U.S., have designated Hamas as a terrorist organization. But Hamas has backing among many Palestinians who are increasingly fed up with Israel's decades-long military occupation of their land. Hamas is also backed by Middle East leaders, including Iran.
Always great pictures and a lot of you let us know this is your favorite part of the, the whole weather cast is talking about the pictures that were sent in. How about this? Leon Jensen shared this one. You see the river otters out there having a pretty good time and I'm sure the water was pretty comfortable considering where the temperatures were from today. We showed this one earlier in the evening. Steve uh, came through with this one. You can see where we had uh, the moon up here and then Venus. How about an airplane? then all the way down towards Billings with the city lights. Appreciate you sharing that one. How about this as well? A video from Paul up into the Bighorn Mountains. Just a beautiful scene there. And you can start to see the colors changing, but just uh, everything with the water flowing. Thanks for sharing that one. Video is always welcome. And uh, how about the great fall colors here from Rudy. This was just up in the Heights up at Lake Elmo and our friend John Potter over in Red Lodge coming through with a great photo and more of those fall colors. We've got a lot of weather to talk about coming up in just a few minutes. St. Vincent Healthcare has announced that it will close its Billings Pain Center next January. That center is the only one of its kind in Billings offering treatment and medication to patients who suffer from chronic pain. According to Intermountain Health, patients currently receiving treatment will shift to their primary care physicians who will now be able to prescribe the medication. The hope is that this strategy allows patients to better integrate pain management with their primary care physicians. Employees at the pain center will have the option of joining other Intermountain clinics, though the company did not say whether the move will result in net job losses. The decision to close the pain center comes just days before St. Vincent's top executive in Billings, Jen Alderfer, is scheduled to leave her position for another role in Tennessee. Two Montana organizations have filed suit in federal court claiming that a state law intended to stop people from voting twice could put people at risk even for innocent actions. It's just the latest lawsuit seeking to block a bill passed by the legislature this year. Mount Perg and the Montana Federation of Public Employees sued over House Bill 892, saying it goes beyond its goal of stopping double voting and threatens lawful voters. Montana already had a law in place saying no one could vote more than once in a single election, but the new law added more specifics saying people can't purposefully remain registered in two places. Republicans say the law was in response to a court case that allowed a voter to vote absentee in one state and in person in another because the elections didn't share any candidates. Plaintiffs argue the language is vague and could burden the right to vote, especially for those that move frequently. Can do something that we've all done, you know, move across different houses in the state, even move within the same county, and you run into this big problem. It's not yet clear if someone could be criminally charged if they simply neglect to cancel their previous registration. The state has not yet filed a response to the complaint in this lawsuit. The Montana Department of Revenue says more than 207,000 property tax rebates were approved during the August and September application period. During that six-week period, the state received 226,700 applications, about 10,500 were denied, and around 2,700 were deemed fraudulent. Overall, uh, overall nearly $137 million was returned to property owners. These numbers could change as the state will honor mail applications postmarked on the deadline date of October 2nd. Montana lawmakers approved the $675 property tax rebates during the 2023 session. There's been push after push over the years to change Montana's Columbus Day holiday to Indigenous Peoples Day to no avail. But those with the Indigenous Peoples Day of Montana organization say they're making small steps forward toward recognition. Montana has 12 tribes and seven tribal reservations, but Marcia Small, co-founder of Indigenous Peoples Day of Montana, says this day is for everyone to honor their ancestral lineage. While other cities and even colleges have recognized Indigenous Peoples Day instead of Columbus Day, Billings does not. I, I don't really have any idea why it has existed to this day as such, because it's really a misnomer. Columbus was not a hero, you know. Um, People go, that's my that's my history. And if you don't need no Nina Santa Maria and whatever, you know, you don't know real history. And I'm like, because that's only 180 degrees of, of history. You can go ahead and tout it. Go for it. But you should also be open minded enough to include 100, the 180 degrees other paradigm. Small says the goal is to get Indigenous Peoples Day classified as a federal holiday. President Joe Biden initially recognized the observation of Indigenous Peoples Day in 2021 and then again in 2022. 
A new Montana documentary called Native Ball premiered for the public tonight at MSU Billings. That film shares the story of a woman named Malia Kipp, who was the first tribal member in Montana to earn a Division I basketball scholarship. As Charlie Kleps explains, her impact went far beyond the hardwood, becoming a trailblazer for so many Native American women. Basketball's always been the main thing. For some, basketball is just a sport, but for Cola Bad Bear and Buddy Windy Boy, it's a way of life. When you pull back my chest, there's basketball pumping, pumping basketball blood. <laughs> a lot of people on the Crow Reservation share the same sentiment. You're representing you know, where you come from, where you grew up. Out in Pryor, there are these outdoor courts, and we would be there probably every night until the sun was going down. That was curfew. Bad Bear, a senior high standout that ended up playing for Montana State, recalls being introduced to the game in Pryor, where she grew up playing with her sisters. Wendy Boy grew up in Lodgegrass, played for MSUB, and now has turned to coaching. He says the sport was an equalizer for him and many others. When I was growing up, it was on the basketball court where, where we were actually you know, considered equals. And while both Windy Boy and Bad Bear are well known in Montana basketball history, neither can say they are the trailblazer that Malia Kipp is. Kipp was the first Native American to receive a full ride Division I scholarship in Montana. And so I'm sure a lot of kids look up to her and see that milestone and see the fact that she did it and accomplished it, set all these stepping stones like they can do it too. My wife Sammy played collegiate basketball, probably had the way paved for her by, by Malia and others that came before her. Native Ball chronicles Kip's journey from the Blackfeet Reservation in northern Montana to UM. I'm, I'm happy for Malia that her story is, is getting the attention it deserves. Co-director Megan Harrington says honoring Kip's story and sharing it with the world is an opportunity she's grateful for. Hopefully this film will, will open a dialogue spark a conversation and allow us to kind of understand those differences because they still exist. A trailblazer that was ahead of her time and one inspiring current role models to do the same. I play for something bigger than me and for those little girls and little boys back home and to show them like, you know, you can do it too. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. And those two Montana basketball staples, Cola Bad Bear and Buddy Windy Boy, were part of a panel that spoke to the crowd after the film aired. The two shared their experiences on how they were impacted by Kip and even did a question and answer session with the crowd. Overall, those in attendance walked out impressed. Important to have a role model like that because it just, especially in sports, it's hard especially being a teenager nowadays, it's just can be a lot. They're all inspirational to where, to where I, I sh like I share like similar stories with them and I could relate to, relate to, like their, uh, relate to their challenges and obstacles, especially when, when it talks about from the NCAA. Oh, I thought it was awesome. Um, you know, Malia is one of those ones that we all looked up to when we were younger. She kind of paved the way for a lot of us because before her, there wasn't a lot of people Native Americans playing in CA Division One. More than 100 people came out for tonight's premiere. The film's directors say they hope to show the documentary at film festivals across the state. Well, still ahead on the MTN 10 o'clock news here on Q2, it's time to lace up those sneakers. We'll catch up with our next super senior who's always looking to run towards the finish line. And in sports, game changers from great plays to record-breaking performances will break down the five best from another exciting weekend of football.